this is my toy project that was born from um, another project that is uh, Dialogic. Dialogic is um, um, a plugin for Godot that allows you to create uh, dialogues in a video game. And I used it and there were some limitations. I quite enjoyed it. Uh, so I built my own. Um, Dialogic was very graphical and I wanted something more programming oriented. So I made this project, which is um, basically a programming language for dialogues. Um, similar to Inkscape, uh, if you have known, if you know about it. So if um, I'll, I'll just show you directly an example of what it looks like. So if I go to see what a peasant uh, works like, so you would just walk up to a peasant and you just uh, click on him uh, like F or E on the keyboard and you start talk to him. It will start the conversation main. This peasant is called John. I will say, hello, how are you? I'm looking good. Then we can assign some variables. The protagonist can reply. Variable substitution works. Uh, and then there's like, every time you see this, it's someone talking. And uh, this, you can also call functions. It's very, I try to make it as clean as possible. Uh, so there's like um, elements of the conversation are like as clean as possible one after the other and one can just read. But at the same time I have uh, like a Pythonish uh, expressive language. So you can do if statements uh, and they are not implemented yet, but you can also do uh, for loops. Uh, they are, functions are implemented. So you can actually call functions. Here there's an example, you can buy an apple and there's a small conversation and thank you for buying objects and so they can be generalized. Um, and closing, like this is another function. Um, yeah, this is how it looks like. Um, it's without color, so it seems a bit unreadable, but trust me, it's just because of the colors. It's, I find it quite pleasing. Um, okay. So this is how it looks like. There's a bunch of other dialogues. We're gonna explore them later. There is a possibility to do a choice um, and other things. Um, I'm gonna explore it in a second. First, we need to set it up. So to set it up, there should be everything explained. So there is a project structure where you can find important things and you can just download it and build it to have your own, um, to have your own test. So, the first thing you should copy this address, uh, HTTPS or uh, let's go HTTPS because you don't, then you don't need any credentials. So you copy this address, uh, go into your projects folder, git clone, paste it. And then the setup, maybe I could simplify or I could make more explicit instructions, but it's far, it's, it's very simple. Uh, so you enter in your project, you can see that's everything. You just make, uh, if you know how to use CMake, it's very basic, it's very basic CMake project. So you just configure it. Must have uh, Bison and Flex installed because I'm using those to parse the, uh, parse the grammar and the tokens. And then we build it. Uh, well, whatever. <laughs> I don't have 300 cores, but it's going to be fine. So don't run with 300 cores. It turns out you run out of memory and everything crashes. Try with a reasonable amount. Okay. Now that we have uh, compiled everything, we can uh, test the the Godot independent binary. So if I run, uh, it's in build, uh, sources, interpreter, and test parser. And then we pass the script. So dialog demo, dialogues, and we go for the peasant that we looked before. It just loads up dialog. So I'm gonna load it in a, in a separate so we look up the script and we look what's it's doing. Uh, we start with main and uh, the first conversation is here and the language actually stops. So we can press enter to continue. Uh, my, uh, we see that the text substitution is working. Then the 
John will reply with the nice test ciao correct and then test is a valid string so we'll actually execute that thank you for buying oh sorry I missed we're calling a function like we are buying a beer and then you're welcome and then the test uh, is correct and protagonist reply and then we buy an apple so this gets repeated thank you for buying an apple you're welcome and then end it really is so it's calling this function and then this function will close this function will close and we are finished we can also do choices so if i load the choice script we have if you would sleep how many hours would that be um let's say one hour yeah yeah one hour uh welcome to our shop we can follow up here so this is how you would um, do the choices this is the text and this is the code that they get executed. I can also do, um, I can also actually do like this and like, uh, this is an entire scope. Uh, yeah, I can call a function here if I want to make it cleaner. Okay, uh, well, we continue, may have a pair and then this buy function is likely different because there is a price as well, you see. May have a pair, uh, thank you for buying pair, it's 32, here's 32 money. Okay, and then we arrived at this uh, question. So this is how you make a choice. What should we do? Uh, what should we do? And then we need, we either swear, uh, sleep hours and buy a strawberry. We can see that the substitution also works for the answers. So it's sleep one hours, the choice we made before. And let's try to sleep one hour. <laughs> like our protagonist sleeps for one hour. Uh, and we have the shots. Uh, the print line is just a terminal uh, print. It's for tracing and debugging in case you need, but in the game it will not show up. And uh, that's it. So this is all well and fun, but we want to make a video game, right? Okay. In order to do that, uh, we go back to our uh, pro line uh, terminal. What we want to do is to go into the demo and what we want to do is load uh, the Godot project first. So this is the way to do the terminal. You can also open Godot and open the project through the um, uh, without the command line. This is just easier for me. It's gonna load. Uh, you need to do this process because it's gonna load up all of the resources, and this is a, a thing of Godot. Um, I'm not sure if you have to save it. I just saved it. And then we hit play. And uh, what I implemented is uh, three different choices. So we can look it up here. These are just buttons. Uh, what the buttons do, every button just takes uh, one of these uh, nodes and clicks activate. And these nodes are um, a native C++ code. So we'll actually call um, activate and then we'll call the main function one of these and now which script is going to load this is well integrated you just um, take your script so let's say choice dialog we reset the script so it has no script at all and um, we go into dialogs uh, no, um, here it's not loading them up okay we load the dialogs uh, choice dialog Normally you could drag and drop, uh, probably because it just loaded the, um, the script. So if I reload the editor, it would also show up all of the uh, resources. Okay, we save. Um, so the choice dialog will now use the choice script that we just had. We'll remember it's this one here. And uh, what you can do, it's play, have the choice dialog, and we have exactly the same interaction as before. So let's now put two. Welcome to our shop. May I have a pair? Uh, thank you for buying a pair. It's 32. Here's 32 money. What should we do now? As you can see, the two, the choices we made is still here. But now we're gonna, well, we're gonna buy a strawberry. And this is gonna call the function, buy a strawberry. So this also works. And uh, that's it. But let's say we want to modify something. I believe I need to close it first. Um, and let's say we want to add uh, another choice. 
we want to work we want to sleep 42 hours because 42 is a magical number and now we have the extra choice answer of life and everything right okay let's see how our changes were applied go here the hours a week the answer of life and everything yes it worked I click 42 hello welcome to our shop may have a pair thank you for buying a pair 32 is 32 money what should we do sleep 42 hours return z for 42 hours um there you go um it just magically works and you have uh, a way to s script your language oh they they appear for some reason <laughs> they are here uh, okay um you can uh, just make your own dialogues as if it was a scripting um an honorable mention uh thank you for making it so far there is a bunch of other honorable mention of alternatives that i discovered while doing this project uh one of them is inky uh, which is uh, similar uh, but slightly different i believe this is much more script oriented and a bit less programming oriented so it really focuses more on the text I, get, I have the feeling it gets a bit cluttered after when you have too many indentation choices and i don't like it too much but it's definitely something worth checking out um and then uh, another honorable mention is uh, what's being used in um uh in monkey island uh, the last one it's called yak and it's their own internal tool uh, it's also inspired by ink and it's it's quite interesting as well i actually kind of, kind of like it and as this interesting way of uh, writing function which are just the sections um and that's it thank you for watching and um, i hope you enjoy hacking away with my tool bye